Good morning, Year 6. So today we're going to be revising some more of our topics for grammar. We'll start off with our spellings and then we'll go over tenses, commas and homophones. So, we'll start off with our spellings. Today we're looking at spellings which end with the suffix shun, so S-I-O-N and T-I-O-N. Just as we did yesterday, I'd like you to go through the spelling test and then the words that you find difficult, those are the words that I want you to practice. And when you're practicing those words, I'd like you to look for other words that also follow the similar, a similar spelling pattern. See if you can identify what it is that they all have in common. Number one, expression. Number two, extension. Number three, invasion. Might be a good word to use as we're learning about World War One. Number four, invention. Number five, excursion. Number six, dimension. Number seven, profession. Number eight, commotion. Now, I'm just going to display the words on screen. Have a look through the words on screen. Find the ones that you found tricky and then keep practicing those. Tenses. So for some verbs, when we write them in the simple past tense, we're just adding the simple suffix ed. But by now we know that there are also lots of irregular verbs where we don't add ed, but instead the original word is actually altered. So if you have a look on screen, we've got the words catch, sleep, watch, cook and drive. Now for some of those words we do add ed, but for others we don't. So I'd like you to draw the table in your book and then write each of the verbs in their past tense form. Then check how many of those did you get right. So catch in the past tense, uh, simple past tense, it's caught. Uh, sleep in simple past tense is slept. Watch becomes watched. Cook becomes cooked. And drive becomes drove. Commas. So commas have multiple uses. They can be used to separate words in a list, but they can also be used to separate clauses and phrases. Have a look through the sentences on screen and see if you can identify which of those sentences have, in which of the sentences the commas have been used correctly. Remember, it can be used for a list or it can be used to separate clauses and phrases. Did you get it right? Excellent. So, it's been used correctly in my favourite foods are pizza, chips and fish fingers. And it's also been used correctly in before the sun could make an appearance the soldiers crawled into the trenches. There the comma has been used to separate the fronted adverbial from the main clause. Homophones. So homophones are words that have the same sound but different spellings. Now, I know further down the school you learn the most common homophones like there, to, be, but now we're in year six, we're looking at a bit more challenging homophones that often are misspelled even sometimes by adults too. So we've got descent, draft, father and band. I would like you to look up the definition of each of those words, look at the different spellings, look at the definitions and then write down the definitions next to the words. Use a dictionary to help you. If you don't have a dictionary, you can look online to help you. So on screen now I've displayed the actual definitions, but your definitions that you have found might be much better than the ones I have much more detailed. Now we've got a powerful photo here. Think about what comes to your mind first when you see this photo. And then you're going to have a go at writing a wow paragraph to go alongside the photo. So we can see we've got a mother, it looks like we can assume a mother being reunited with her child. And I want you to write an irregular, uh, sorry, write a paragraph containing an irregular past tense verb, some commas and some homophones. Remember to use the picture as your inspiration. And then your challenge word from your spellings today is commotion. Okay, so a commotion means to um, for something to happen. Okay, so commotion means that something's happened and there's something disrupting um, the piece. Yeah, so 
that once you've done that, I'd like you to email your writing to year6 at grange.harrow.school.uk. Take care. Bye.